been a good year for you, right? It's been pretty nuts, actually, man. I mean, I feel like it's been a long time coming, you know. I've been on the underground working real hard. I was a songwriter first, and then to jump on a TV show was pretty scary stuff to me, but I'm so glad it's paid off, man. Signed mm. to Island Records, and we've got the EP coming out 4th of November. I've been on tour, so, yeah, I'm pretty much living the dream right mm. now. And you know what it is? Like, just in case somebody out there is watching this or they're listening to this, they've had their head under a rock, it's The Voice, the BBC song contest show that you came from yeah. and that definitely thrust you into the limelight but i know that there's a history before the voice so for those that don't know just break down the musical life of vince kid before absolutely the voice. yeah um i grew up in a very suburban part of south london um my dad's a cab driver so very very humble beginnings you know no one's musical in my family i had to get out there and do it myself meet the contacts so um yeah, I was just, I just started writing songs, you know, and then was playing gigs, just hustling hard, like literally <sighs> crawling through the dirt, hard, hard, hard hustle. Got scouted out um, and then started writing songs for other people. I got a publishing deal and was just writing my own stuff in the same time, you know, playing lots of the raves, lots of the underground scene. And, you know, I had a bit of a, bit of a reputation on a real underground level and then I just wanted to get onto bigger stages really so decided to go for The Voice, someone recommended it to me and yeah the rest is history. The rest is history. Now I'm going to get it out of the way early in the interview because I'm not going to allow you to stunt on me yeah. I'm hearing about this Michael Jackson phone conversation that you had yeah. So just tell me how the conversation <laughs> started and what you spoke about on the phone. Okay this is a very random story and people are going to think what the hell is his life like how did that happen but um, I was playing a gig and there was a prince, the Prince of Brunei came to watch and um, he really enjoyed the gig and was like, yo, come come, hang out with us. So we all went for drinks. I was very, very drunk and he got the phone out and was talking to Michael Jackson My and was like, yo, you've got to speak, you've got to speak to this guy. Da -da 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 -da. So I started speaking to Michael and everyone was like singing down the phone to him and I was drunk and obviously attention seeking and did it. And Michael Jackson was like really impressed and was like, wow, you're going to be a star and it was pretty weird. That's mad though, like, so like yeah. the Prince was just casually just talking to Michael Jackson on the phone. Yes. So that, that they, were, they were like really good friends and like, yeah, it was a very, very random position to be in. Like, Number how did one the conversation start though? Like, how did it start? I don't remember because I was drunk, <laughs> but it was literally just, it was literally very quick and very polite and yeah, and then just like everyone was like sing and I just burst into song like so some idiot. Did, did you never ever think about running away with the phone and hanging up and trying to see like Michael Jackson's phone number? <laughs> that would be really something, right? Yeah, no, this prince had a lot of securities. I don't think that would have worked <laughs> somehow. Oh, say no more. So like another thing I want to address, the name Vince Kid. Is that your real name? Is that on the birth certificate? Um, Yes. It is? Yes. Like that's star ready, man. That just sounds so, it sounds stardom ready. Yeah. I don't think many people believe that. <laughs> they can believe what they want to believe, but I'm saying yes. <laughs> uh huh. Let's say no more. No, so I've got a twin with another name, but no, I'm, that's just my twin. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the, the track Sick Love off the EP, yes. written by yourself? Yes, written by myself with um, my good friends, the Royal Palms and Leon Jackson. Mm. And obviously, Lady Leisha is on it now. She wrote her verse. Mm. So break down the story of, you know, the single Sick Love in the words of Vince Kidd. Okay, um, a lot of people are really shocked when I say this, but I had a, a really, I had no money when I wrote the song, I wrote it last year, pre The Voice, um, and I had the most budget studio in Kilburn. Mm. I had no money, so I paid like £300 to have this studio for six months. Obviously, you can imagine it was disgusting, so we stuck photos of like, lots of naked supermodels, mm. lots of Kate Moss's breasts were all over the walls Good look. and that inspired the song oh. um how lady leisha jumped on it uh that was i'm a big big fan of hers i saw her f64 and i was like this girl is crazy you know the one where she's um you must be dumb 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 yeah, dumb yeah. Beat, like, num, num, num. i was like this girl is sick i need her i want to work with her so i hollered her and she'd actually seen my a64 she never watched the voice she'd just seen my a64 and um, she was really impressed by that. So basically, shout out Jamal Edwards because it was a SBTV matchmaker. Yeah. Big up SBTV. Now, we was just talking a little while ago before we pressed the button and played that track that um, 
you know, a studio session that you had for three months in Kilburn. You had breasts all over the wall. That was the inspiration. So I want to ask, like, how does a regular writing session go down? Is it always like that? Um, a regular writing session, you can't, I can't really explain because it's never regular, ever in my books. I don't like it that way. Um, I'm the kind of person, I don't like to work with every single songwriter. You know, since I've signed to Ireland, they want to put me with this person, this person. I'm, no. no, 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 no. I'm working with the Royal Palms, ELE, Michael Percy, who are all my friends who I've been working with from before the show, and I'm still going to carry on working with now, just because I feel comfortable with them. It feels like a more soulful experience, you know, because they're my friends. And yeah, there's no specific way of writing. It's whatever goes, whatever we feel, we just run with it. Mm. Now, you know, everybody knows, I, I, I believe most people know, that you came out of the BBC Song Contest show, which is The Voice. Now, there's a stigma attached to reality TV, song contests and whatnot. Mm. And with you preceding your name, a lot of the times is going to be the kid from The Voice, Vince Kidd. Mm -hmm. Are you cool with that for now? I'm cool with that. You know, um, at the end of the day, mm, I came from a very, very, very humble upbringing you know like my dad's a cab driver my mum works in an office it's not like being a star was ever something that people thought would happen for someone that comes from where i come from so i'm cool with it man as long as the music's good then i think it'll be fine i think that stigma will get sh shaken off um people just have to come and see it live and know that yeah i'm the real deal i write my own music and I'm, I'm the boss of what I do, you know, I'm not a manufactured artist like people might assume people are from them shows. It was just a platform to me, so. Let's put it on record for some of them that don't know as well. You was the, you was one of the finalists. I was, yeah. yeah you was one of the finalists. I was Jesse J's final, yeah. finalist. Yeah, yeah, man. You done a lot on the show, man. Like the performances was crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wanted it to be a lot crazier, but you know, it's BBC, it had to be toned down a little bit, but I think it was enough and I, I just look at the voice as, you know, that was like four, three or four months out of my life. So out of my whole musical life, it's not that long. It's obviously what people have seen of me, but I look at it as the starting point, my way of getting my name out of there. But what's about to come next is, is the real exciting uh -huh. stuff. So, you know, like with, with the EP, you've got some real street certified artists on there now. Some people might be surprised that someone like yourself coming off the back of that show mm. and just go straight pop, but you chose to go with Scorcher, EXO, Lady Leisha, Benny Banks. Like, how did those collaborations happen, man? Uh, a lot of the people, I've, obviously, they've heard of me from being on the scene before. As I said, I didn't just step onto a TV show. so And they all love, this, they all love the music. So I, I think it's great that people don't have... I think in this day, day and age, you know, we're all... So much more open to these TV shows. At the end of the day, it's a part. It's a big part of pop culture now. These TV shows, and it's not like someone's gonna turn around and go, "Oh, you're on that TV show. I can't work with you." Like, as long as you're doing something good, great. We we all we all want the platform, you know, as artists. We all wanna get onto bigger stages. So. Hey. Listen. I've been watching her a minute. She's been watching me a year. First seen her at the bar. She can't believe that I'm here.